Hey, Chad here with LearnHollowLens.com, and this week, I just want to let you know that I've opened up the doors. So the doors are officially opened to LearnHollowLens.com, so if you've been waiting to uh, jump into the membership, uh, go ahead and head over to LearnHollowLens.com, and you can uh, see how to join the membership and uh, get access to all the fantastic uh, content uh, that I've been creating since September of 2016. So um, there's a lot of premium content in there. I've done a master class every single month. I've done a live Q and A every single month, and uh, there's a couple other little uh, fun stuff in there too. So by all means, check it out. See if it's something that you would enjoy being a part of, and uh, and jump in. Just um, to kind of show you a little preview, I'm going to run some um, a video of a part of a live Q&A that I've done in the past, just to kind of let you see um, what you could be a part of if you have questions and things like that on mixed reality development, Unity, or HoloLens development. Um, every single month, I open up to my members to ask questions, and I dig into those questions and, and try to provide um, as comprehensive as I can uh, information uh, to my members. So. I would love for you to jump in to the membership. Uh, I think it's a lot of fantastic information in there. Um, my current members get a lot of value out of it. I have members who have released apps on the uh, Windows Store. I have others who have their own YouTube channels or doing things. So um, by all means, uh, check it out. See if it's something that you would like. If you've enjoyed my tutorial series or any of these other videos I've done here on YouTube, um, I really think you would love the membership. All right, let me roll some of that uh, video from a previous live Q&A. Hey, welcome. Here we are at the June 2017 live Q&A. Halfway through the year. It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Well, I just want to say thanks so much for being a part of this community, and thanks for submitting some fantastic questions. Let's see, I just want to make sure that this is streaming okay and my sound is set up before I keep going too much further. Might be a little loud. Let's try that just in case. Hopefully I'll be better. But again, I just want to say thanks so much uh, for spending some time with me uh, today, whether you're watching here live or through the recording. Just appreciate you uh, being active in the community and trying to gain more knowledge around the hall and in general. So hopefully you'll be able to watch the uh, master classes um, for the last uh, few months, especially the last two were around spatial understanding. And I know I got some uh, questions and I'm getting responses that people are hearing me fine. So that's fantastic. I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed uh, the master classes, especially the ones on the hall, I mean, on the spatial understanding. Um, I've seen some questions come in on spatial understanding, so uh, that's a good thing, good sign to me. And I've gotten some good feedback from those classes, so if you've not checked those out yet, definitely make sure you block off some time and look at uh, both the spatial understanding uh, master classes. Uh, definitely watch both of them, um, the first one and then the second one in that order. It's definitely important. Okay, so this is the agenda. We just did the welcome. And uh, we're going to go through the pre-submitted questions first. And if there's any time, we'll go through some uh, live uh, questions as well. I don't know how much time there will actually be. Uh, we, will, we will see because we have 11 pre-submitted questions uh, this month. So I believe that's the most pre-submitted questions uh, we've received. Uh, so that's a good thing. I'm happy, I'm happy that folks are engaging and using this benefit of the membership. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the first question. So first question comes from uh, Harold and he says, hey, what would be the best way to scale or resize particle effects? He has this nice free campfire asset uh, with a parented, uh, where the asset's actually parented underneath an empty game object. And when scaling that empty game object, the mesh scales okay, uh, but the particle effect doesn't. Um, and then he follows up with, I guess there's no easy universal solution to this. So he kind of submitted two different questions, um, uh, one a couple days later. And in that uh, second one, he said, I'll just mention that these particular assets, the campfire uh, from David uh, Stenfors, 
and the fallen tree berry, they don't scale well. And that is true. In fact, that campfire asset is one that I toyed with several months back and it was one of the things that prompted me to do the particle masterclass that I did because there is no easy scaling. There really is no universal uh, solution to that. Um, you have to actually go and modify uh, each of the appropriate size values um, in each of the modules of the particle system that you're working with. And obviously that can take a while. Now, there is a paid asset in the store, and I've not used this, but the reviews are good. And it's called Particle Scaler. It's $10. And uh, the reviews, it has 115 people that have reviewed it, and it's an average of a five-star uh, review. And, um, you know, now it's relatively old. So my first concern was, was this even using the new Shuriken uh, particle system? Um, and it is. So the description says it's compatible with both legacy stuff, which you really shouldn't be using at this point, and the Shuriken particle system. So... Um, Shuriken came out around Unity 4, and uh, of course now we're in Unity 5, and will be Unity 2017 soon. Uh, but based off the uh, reviews, it appears this works again. I've not used it, so I can't vouch for it. Uh, but if it's one of those things you don't want to sit here and tweak and modify each of the individual particle um, effect module uh, items like you know, size over lifetime, size, the scale of the in, uh, effect itself, then this may be something that could uh, help you out. Uh, because, yes, I've not seen any kind of universal uh, solution to this other than going through and actually modifying them manually or using a, a script where he'll go through and modify it. And obviously you could you could create your, your own as well, but, you know, I doubt you're going to uh, be able to do it for less than you know 10 bucks worth of time <laughs> so uh, so if this does do what it says and again based on the reviews it appears so uh, then this might be your best bet uh, to get that type of a solution going forward okay next question is get back to my slides here now, this is around spatial understanding this one came from uh, James and question has to do with like using a complex model so again with the spatial understanding um, master class that we just did here in June we ended that class by placing like a cube and a really thin cube like kind of like a poster if you will and a cylinder in the world you know in the actual space on the wall on an edge and on the floor and it all worked and so James tried to use a more complex, a typical model, and it didn't it didn't place in this space well. And so he's wondering from the complexity of the model, if that's the problem, um, you know, is there something that needs to be considered here? So I uh, actually followed up with James and asked for the model that he was using, and he sent it to me. And just I'm trying to make sure there wasn't anything special about that model that would cause uh, cause an issue. And fortunately, there was not. And so this is just a, a screenshot of where I used uh, this model. And so over here, you can kind of see this. I had a wall. I did the whole, you know, want to be placed on the on the wall. And I put uh, that equal transporter complex model that he had for a demo that he's working on, stuff that he's doing. And I definitely ha uh, suggest if you've not uh, checked out James's channel on YouTube, do that. It's, uh, James Vasquez. And, uh, in fact, I will uh, pull that up here uh, when we're done. In fact, let me do that now. Otherwise, I might forget. I don't want to do that. So, should have had this up already, but I did not. Um, but, anyway, yeah, he's, he does uh, stuff around a lot of uh, Star Trek. And, okay, so this is not going to be a... Um, Easy link uh, to grab, but oh, yeah, here we go. this would be better. Uh, so, Jimmy Vaz one on YouTube user uh, Jimmy Vaz one. And he has these uh, 
uh, different um, stuff on the Star Trek, and he had this really cool one on pickup truck. But I'll put this uh, link in the notes as well. But definitely check his his stuff out. But um, back to the question here. There's three different things that I had to do uh, to make this work, and uh, the first is the object itself. On the top level, of this object, this Eagle, Eagle uh, transporter object, I added in a box collider. Okay, now, um, and I'll actually get to why this still works later. Once I added in the box collider, I then changed the scaling, the size, so it actually the box uh, encompassed the entire object. But you know, try not to do too much over or below, and I had to move the center of it just to you know uh, move it up. Basically, the whole point is to have um, some kind of a space to say, hey, when I'm when I'm trying to give the spatial understanding uh, this data, this shape, I want it to place that I have the overall shape and it's not going to uh, cause cause any issues, right? So I used a box collider here. That's kind of the first thing. Next thing I did is actually scaled the object. So this, the object is just you know typically scaled at one one one, and that'd be way too big uh, in the actual world. And so I scaled it down to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And you see how big that is here uh, versus this wall uh, cube is 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and I forget 0 0.01 or something like that for the uh, for the thinness there. Um, so, you know, typically your cubes come out as one meter. And so in order to make them the right size that I want them in the world, I usually do those at 0 0.2, 20% uh, of what they were. Uh, for this massive object, depending on where you grab your model, you have to figure out what your right scale is uh, for that. For this model, I just got pulled down to 0 0.05. You may want it bigger or smaller than that. Uh, but those are the two things so far that you had to do, is bring in a box collider and scale it around the object the way you want it to, and uh, then actually scale uh, the object itself uh, down so it actually fit inside of a space. Because if it's too big, it, it won't find a space to put and if I ran this in fact the first time I did run it that's what I ran into is I made this box collider but I didn't scale it down and it's said placing objects one of two uh, because it could place this one but this it just couldn't find a spot big enough to, to put this guy okay now the third uh, thing that you need to do is you have to update uh, the script into position objects so this is a script that you know we made in that master class and in the master class made this uh, position object. And originally what I was doing was saying, hey, I want to grab the renderer of my object because I was just using a cube or a cylinder. And so I want to grab that renderer and just get the size of that. And that's going to be my dimensions that I use uh, to pass into the, uh, the object placement uh, definition. Well, the uh, issue is that complex object so this object here, he doesn't have a renderer at the top. Obviously, the ones down here below do, but this main one does not. And so that's why I decided, well, maybe instead of doing that, let's just go and add in a collider instead, a box collider. So that's why I added in that box collider, and then I changed the code here to uh, use the box collider instead of the renderer. Now, word of caution here, um, the renderer made it work with, uh, again, in the master class, we did a cube, I did a capsule, and uh, well, I basically had two cubes in a capsule, capsule. And if you did this, that capsule has a capsule collider and not a box collider. So you'd want to change that to actually have a box collider instead if you wanted this. And but I think that would probably be like the best approach, at least, you know, just me thinking about this um, since I got this question. I, I believe this is the route I would actually go um, in general, is instead of doing the renderer, that can work on simple objects, but if you're trying to do more complex objects, then on the root object, put your box collider on there, even if it's not a box, uh, because chances are you you want it to you know sit on on something and not have it um, intersect uh, around that you know space anyway. So a box collider is what I would do there, and uh, yeah. So basically, that's the code I had to change was from render to box collider, and then made sure I actually put the box collider on and scaled it down. Once I did that, it was able to place it into the world with any other objects. Okay. So hopefully that was beneficial. If there's still any questions there, by all means, let me know.
So hopefully that answered your question. If you have any further questions on that, let me know. All right, question number six is, um, how do you place an object in a pre-scanned room and have this placement persist even when you restart the app? I tried to search, couldn't find a good example. Um, well, unless I'm misunderstanding your question, and I could be, and if I am, then send me an email, follow up with me, uh, Hachi. But what I think uh, you're after is the World Anchor Masterclass. So uh, we did a masterclass all about World Anchors. And the idea with that is you uh, load up the scene, you put the object in the world, and whether you put it there via spatial understanding or you just put it in front of the user or meter there, you let them place it wherever they want to. The point is, once it's placed where you want to place, where you want it to be placed or where the user wants it, uh, you assign a world anchor to it. When you assign that world anchor to it, you can close the app, you can shut down the app, uh, then you can turn off the hall lens, you know, 20 days later, just uh, random here, you can turn back on the hall lens, open up that app, and that item will be exactly where you left it in the world. Okay? Now, if you uninstall the app, it won't. Because when, when you uninstall an app, um, then you'll lose that data, which also happens if you redeploy the app. So during development mode, when you're working with an object and you place it in your world, after you, you know, you're scanning the world and then you place the object there and you're doing some tweaking and then you go and make some changes to your code and redeploy, when you redeploy, that original world anchors will go away because it basically uninstalls your app and reinstalls it. And when it uninstalls the app, it uninstalls the data associated to that app, um, the, the local data there, and that would be your you know, world anchor stuff. So hopefully that answered your question. If I totally missed it, if I didn't quite understand what you meant by pre-scanned room and you're not just talking about you know just scanning the room and, and doing that, then let me know. Uh, but I would definitely encourage you, if you haven't looked at the World Anchor Masterclass, do that. And I think it was either last month's or the months before Q&A, we talked some more about uh, World Anchors there. Um, so you could follow up with that as well. So we enjoyed uh, kind of seeing some premium content there from a live Q&A session uh, that I did over at learnhollands.com. If you would like to be a part of these live Q&As in the future, then definitely jump on over to learnhollands.com, become a member, and uh, you can be in February's live Q&A. And you'll have immediate access to all the previous live Q&As, as well as every single masterclass that we've done um, since September of 2016. So I do hope that you will take the opportunity to jump into the membership, try it out, see if it's right for you. Hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Hope to see you in the membership.